That's, I guess. Oh, <clears throat> welcome back to Talking Serpents. All right, that was, that's not staged, so no, it's ridiculous. All right, anyways, you know why you're here. I know why you're here. You want to see how to install branches in a reptile enclosure. So I've been doing this for years, so I'm going to share all of my tricks and tips to make this easy, to make it strong. Well, let's just get to it. All right, so we're obviously gonna need some branches, right? So I got my, I've got my trusty knife. Uh, on second thought. Um, all right, some of the next tool. Oh, that's a little better. Uh, this is a joke. Uh, no way. Some of the next tool. All right, the next tool is much better. You got a sawzall. We can do better than that. Some of the next tool. Much better. All right, let's fire it up and get ready. Although, this is a baby chainsaw. You know what? Summon the next tool. Now that is what I'm talking about. I don't think we're going to have to summon any more tools. You know what this means? Let's go get some branches. So I found the branch and uh, let's go lop it down, all right? All right. This will fit perfectly in that reptile enclosure. You ready? Wait, don't we get our branches from ArdonBranches.com? Oh, wait, 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 yeah, yeah, Oh, yeah, yeah, the reptile safe, many different sizes and variations. Well, that was ridiculous. Get out of here. Let's go in the back, back in the shop. I got to show you a little something. All right, it's time to get serious. Like I said, this is from rrbranches.com, so thank you very much for supplying this awesome service to the reptile hobby. They have many different sizes and variations on their website. I'll make sure to link it down below. So they also have different kinds of wood, but I personally like using grape wood. This is grape wood. This is sandblasted grape wood, which means there is no bark on here. I have found that this is the strongest. Um, I also personally like the look more, but there's also ghost wood, which I have worked with. Uh, un unfortunately, I have worked with. Um, on that note, if you have worked with branches specifically ghost wood if you have mounted ghost wood strongly not cracked it and not had problems and mounted a reptile enclosure put a comment down below i'm gonna love the comment i'm gonna put a little give you a little reward uh, you know yeah it, don't be a liar though because you know what i don't know anybody that has mounted that those branches properly and strong and didn't do a little bit of swearing um yeah, so they only put in the comment section below. But anyways, we use grape wood. Because it is strong, you can bind a bond a, a one branch to another branch, bind them to the wall, you're not going to snap them, so they have strength. So we're going to be mounting all these branches in this 5 foot wide, 2 foot deep, and 5 foot tall custom PVC reptile enclosure. But you know what? we got to free up our workspace, so all this glass has got to go. You ready? 3, 2, 1. All right, goodbye glass. So, now the next task is to just use your imagination. What I've learned, the best thing to do is sometimes, honestly, get a chair out. You sit there, you think about how you want all these branches configured. You want some on the right side, the left side, high, low, in the middle. You want to join one branch to another branch. What exactly are you looking to make? So just use your imagination. Have fun, take your time if you'd like. And also, every branch is, this is not something that was automated in a computer and it's all the same. Meaning, they're all different. Every single one has different bends, branch sizes uh, that are protruding from each end. So you get to use what the branch has given you in nature and just work with that. All right, so we just installed the first branch, mounted it, strongly to the bottom as well as the back wall. So that's how you do that. Done deal, that's how you install a branch. No, I'm just kidding. Um, now I'm going to properly teach you 
in steps how to install these branches. So we're going to be installing this branch right here. We like the idea of it being mounted on the back wall there as well as right there. So first trick and tip, when these are cut out in the field, whatever you want to call it, they're not flat. So this is a straight edge. You probably won't be able to see it, that's okay. But it's not completely flat. And the more surface area and the flatter, if you have a flat surface, do another flat surface, bind it together with screws, it's gonna be stronger. So what I like to do is use my miter saw. Right, so this is a miter saw, like I said. It makes the job, if you wanna do it um, more perfectly, nice and flat. All right, so we are going to be mounting this branch on the back wall. It kind of looks like it's joined in the, into this lower branch. So like I said before, if I didn't say before, I want a flat surface to a flat surface. And we're gonna have this angled up. And of course, this part of the upper branch is connected to the back wall. And it is also a flat surface. I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera. Whatever tool you do have, like I have a, a nice chop saw. You don't have to have a chop saw. You could do it with other saws. You can get the last bit of the angle to fit on the wall with a sander, whatever have you. I'm sure you can figure it out. Don't overcomplicate things. All right, on to the next part. This is a very easy part. So you figure out where you want it on the wall or wherever you're placing yours. And I'm going to be using my trusty pencil. Um, kind of hard to do on video, but I will be marking around the entire base of the branch where it meets the wall over here as well as over here. And uh, let me get to that next step. We'll show you next. All right, well, I just finished using my trusty pencil to go around the edges of the branch to know exactly where I will be mounting this branch to the wall. So what I like to do is I like to put an X. For this one, I'm gonna be using one screw, since it isn't a very large surface, it kinda of depends on what you're working with. So you'll be the judge of that. And I like to make sure there's no holes in the branch itself, um, no voids, stuff like that. Nice solid mounting surface, which will make a solid and strong bond. So and then down here, I'm going to be using a screw here and here. So I like to drill from the inside out. Now all those holes are drilled. Now I'll go from the back side because I like using a countersink bit. You don't have to, but I do. All right, that is a countersink. And what it is, is your screw will sit in there and be a little bit flush with the surface or slightly below the surface. And uh, you don't have to use this step, but I like doing it. All right, so the next step I think is the most important part to understand, and that is pilot drilling before you screw into each branch. So I'm gonna pretend like everybody watching this video doesn't know what a pilot drill is, so that way everybody um, gets exactly what they need while watching the video. So I'm going to take a regular screw, this is a drywall screw, and I'm going to screw it into the branch. And, and it should crack, meaning if it does crack, then it's not gonna be as strong mounted to another surface, and um, it's just, uh, it's no good. So let me give you an example, because I could talk or I could just do it. Oh, well that was very easy. Yeah, so it's split, and you don't want that. So now let's talk about pilot holes and why they're important, and I'll show you exactly how to do them. Very easy. So I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know and nothing you don't know. I'm gonna keep it very basic for pilot holes, so it won't be daunting. So pretty much all it is, is pre-drilling uh, before you put the skirt in. And what that does is the drill removes the mass majority of the material, but not too much, because if you ever look on the outside of a screw, there are threads, and the threads are what binds the materials together. So, um, we have various different lengths of drywall screws, and there are two outer diameters in what the majority of them are. So this one is number sixes, extremely common, and also common is number eights. And like I said, that's just the outer diameter of the screw, 
and I'll make it super easy. All you're going to need is a three 30 seconds drill bit. That will work for both sizes. So I don't think it could be any easier than that, but I highly recommend that you absolutely must pre-drill or you'll get the splits. No one wants the splits. All right, so now we are going to mount the branch. So like before, you have the outline of the branch that is gonna be mounted to the wall right there. And right there, we left them on here. So you're going to need a helper for this particular part. So the person on the inside of the reptile enclosure is going to hold it inside the lines here and wherever you're going to be mounting. So I'm going to be going there and there. And uh, so I'm going to have my helper hold this up. And from the back side, I'll show you what I'm going to be doing from the back side. With my helper inside, I'm going to go from the back side of the reptile enclosure and with the holes I had already made, I will be using my, of course, the 3 30 seconds drill bit to drill into the wood itself. All right, are you ready, Stephanie? Ready from the bottom. From the bottom. All right. Drill straight in. Take a little material out. Go back in. <laughs> Remove all that sawdust. Ready, Stephanie? Ready. All right, now I'm going to screw it in. Sometimes you back it out if you need to. You don't like, you don't really need to, but I do. All right, so now for the next one, but I think you already know how that one goes. So pretty simple, right? All right, so we got a little fast forward in the future. So this customer wanted one, two, three custom shelves. That way their snake has multiple levels to explore. So I'm actually gonna be adding this branch to a shelf. So I figured I would show that. So of course, I'm going to be attaching this branch to the back wall. You already know how to do that, but now we're going to be attaching this branch to the shelf. So we're going to be making a little bit of a flat spot right here. So I might use a sander, I might use the chop saw, I don't really know. Um, to be pretty much whatever tools you can make work, those that's the best tool, you know? So um, also, on that note, if you need a shelf, we have many different sizes and variations on our website, TalkingSerpents.com. We have them in raw birch wood for DIY reptile enclosures. We have custom interior coating, so you get to choose interior coating. And of course, we have them in PVC as well. So there will be a link down in the description for the website if you need a shelf as well. All right, let's go ahead and attach it to the wall and the shelf. This branch structure is looking incredible. Love it. You got this branch going over to this shelf and this branch mounted and goes over to this shelf. So. We did take, we used our sander. We have a disc sander, but you can use any sander. Whatever gets it done, nice flat spot on there. Put two screws right there through that and two screws go into the back wall for this branch. And it is nice and solid. So we'll see where the next branch takes us. So we decided to put the next branch right here, which gives us another opportunity to once again attach it to the back wall. But now you have a new opportunity to show you how to attach a branch to a branch. So we have already cut everything flat and to fit properly. We use a sander to grind away, kind of make a nice concave area. And if you look on the back side of this, we're just going to drill a hole, pilot hole through here, pilot hole through there, drill them, bond them together. All right, well, in the next video, you're gonna see them all bonded together. So now these two branches are bonded together with some screws and of course bonded together on the back wall but let me zoom out a little bit and now you can actually see that we have completed the branch structure and we've got one branch going up to the ceiling and a couple screws going into the side of the branch that is going diagonal here and then you got another branch going all the way to the top right side of the enclosure and screwed two screws right here into this branch structure as well. I think it looks really good. Definitely wanted to use as much uh, space inside this five by two by five PVC reptile enclosure as we could to all the shelves, to the ceiling, all the way to the floor. Love it. I don't know about you, but I am absolutely in love with the way this branch structure turned out. I went for an artificial tree going through the center of the enclosure to reach from the bottom all the way to the top in the enclosure. We kind of went with like a bonsai look, if you know what a bonsai tree is. 
and uh, yeah, it reaches all the hides, and I, it definitely is. Ah, I wish it was mine. I really wish it was mine. <laughs> I'll just leave it as that. Also, something very interesting. So this enclosure is for someone who's supported my Instagram account for years. And this Instagram account is called PD Python. Believe it or not, this reptile enclosure is for, are you ready? You weren't expecting this, a piebald ball python. This ball python I have seen climb up and down many different structures. I've always seen like pictures and videos. It's a very uh, arboreal ball python. I mean, my ball python would definitely climb. So I cannot wait to see what this snake's gonna do in this reptile enclosure. Hopefully you get lots of pictures and videos of that. But yeah, uh, this has to be the biggest reptile enclosure I have ever seen for a ball python. Um, pretty insane. I'm, I'm pretty stoked on that. Also, while we're on that note of talking about reptile enclosures, if you're needing a reptile enclosure, check out our website, TalkingSerpents.com. We have many different sizes and variations down there. We have DIY enclosures. We got custom interior exterior coatings. PVC enclosures, honestly, PVC has been taking over our business lately. Um, many different sizes and variations I haven't even talked about lately. Oh, we got snake hooks, hides, shelves. Well, you know, you just go check it out. Heat bulb kits, just go check it out. There's lots of stuff. That's the end of the video. If you liked the video, strike that like button. If you have any comments, post in the comment section below. Please do subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.